What's up? This is Mario and welcome to Awesome Audio. In this video, we will talk about additive synthesis. Additive synthesis is a method of creating sounds using sine waves with different frequencies, amplitudes and durations, and is based in the fact that any sound in real life, be it a musical instrument, a voice and even noises, can be imitated by mixing sine waves only. Why can't we imitate instruments or voices by combining other types of waves such as square waves or sawtooth waves? This is because the sine wave is the purest and most perfect vibration there can be. A way of proving this is that it is the only wave whose shape doesn't change when run through a filter, which in the case of acoustics could be a door or a sound absorbent material, and in the case of electricity may be a capacitor or an inductor. Any other wave would be deformed when filtered by any of these examples, but not the sine wave, it retains its shape and only its amplitude changes. With this knowledge, plus what we learned from the previous episode, could we make a square wave using sine waves only? At first, it may seem hard to get a wave made with straight lines by adding up waves that are curves. Luckily for us, Fourier series come to our rescue, which are named in honor of the mathematician Joseph Fourier who studied vibrations. Fourier series tell us how to build different waves using only sine waves. The Fourier series for the square wave is the following equation. This apparent monstrosity can be interpreted as a simple kitchen recipe with which you only need to follow simple steps. The procedure is the following. Decide the frequency and amplitude we want for the square wave. This frequency will give us the musical note it will produce. Generate a sine wave with that same frequency and the decided amplitude multiplied by 4 divided by pi. Add a sine wave with triple the frequency and one third the amplitude of the first wave. Add a sine wave with 5 times the frequency and 1 fifth the amplitude of the first wave. Continue with 7 times the frequency and 1 seventh the amplitude, 9 times the frequency and 1 ninth the amplitude, etc. until you grow tired since this series is infinite. In the example, I'll explain this with further detail. Stir and serve. Let's do this procedure. Let's imagine we want to create a 440Hz square wave, so we start with a 440Hz sine wave, which we will call our first component. We add a second component to it, which will have triple the frequency and one-third the amplitude of the first component, and we get a wave with two components added together. At the red lines, I show points of interest. Two falling slopes give a more pronounced falling slope as a result. And a big upward peak added to a small downward peak gives us a big upward peak with a small downward peak as a result. Now, we take this two-component wave and add a third component, which will have five times the frequency and one-fifth the amplitude of the first component. With this, we obtain a three-component wave. Next, we add a fourth component. Observe that by now, the resulting wave starts to adopt a square shape. So, if we keep adding sine waves following this pattern, the result will come closer to the shape of a perfectly square wave each time. The series is infinite, so you may stop when you've achieved a good enough precision. For example, when you get to frequencies your device is no longer able to record or reproduce or that are outside of the human audible range, that is, higher than 20 kHz. Let's compare directly how a sine wave and a square wave sound. Now, let's compare a square wave as we increase the number of components. Remember that each component is a sine wave, so a square wave with a single component is technically a sine wave. If by means of a filter we remove all frequencies higher than 1400 Hz from this square wave, the result would be the two-component wave made up by a 440 Hz wave and a 1320 Hz wave, since the rest of the components would be higher than 1400 Hz and therefore would be removed. This would happen, for example, if we try to reproduce a 440 Hz square wave through a speaker that can only reproduce up to 1400 Hz. We have to keep in mind that even though the square wave has a frequency of 440 Hz, it has frequency components higher than 440 Hz. In this case, the components higher than 1400 Hz would be outside of the speaker's range, and therefore the square wave's timbre would change. Additive synthesis may also be used to synthesize the sound of musical instruments, although in this case it's a bit more complicated since in a musical instrument sound, its components are varying their amplitude with time. For example, these are the approximate frequencies and amplitudes of the sine waves required to imitate the sounds of an oboe playing the note F5. Using Audacity, I individually generated sine waves with these frequencies and amplitudes, and once mixed down, this is the result that I got.
As you can hear, this is only an approximation. To perfectly imitate the tone of the oboe, I would only need to add more components since I only used 7 for this example, and manipulate the variation of amplitude of its individual components with more precision. With that, we conclude this episode. In the next one, we will talk about spectral analysis. If you enjoyed this episode, you may hit like, leave a comment, and share it to those interested. For more content like this, you may also subscribe. See you in the next video.